In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I edited that visor transition effect that you just saw in Adobe Premiere Pro. What's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And today I'm going to show you this effect that you just saw. So you can see here in Premiere, I've got my three clips close up on players' visors. And this is all footage that I shot for the Canadian Football League, colored using my LUTs. But I've got my three shots, and you can see here I've already created this effect, and then just goes through. And in theory, you can just loop this infinitely. But that's the gist of it, and we're not going to refer back to what I've already created here. We're going to create this from scratch. So you can see I've marked the point on each of these clips with a marker, and you can just click M if you want to place a mark anywhere, just like that. And if you highlight a clip and then click M, it'll place it on the clip. But I've marked the points where I want to zoom in. And we're going to start by drawing a mask. So let's click our pen tool here. And we're just going to mask around this once. And then I'll show you what we're going to do from there. So we've got our mask here. And you can see we only have the visor. If I invert this, then we have everything except for the visor. So let's actually place a cut where we had our marker. And we're going to delete this off of that previous clip in the back here. And then here we have a mask. So let's click mask path and we're gonna track this visor all the way through for these frames that we've indicated. I have 11 frames here that we're gonna be working with. You can draw more or less depending on how fast or how slow you want the transition to be. So I'm actually gonna invert this just so I can see a little bit better as we go through. And let's just skip forward two frames. And then we're going to move all our points and adjust. Good, now let's skip forward another two frames. And we're gonna adjust all of our points. And the reason I'm not skipping forward one frame is because you can see, skipping forward two frames, the movement from one frame to the next isn't that drastic. And Premiere will automatically split the difference between this frame and that frame on this middle one here. So I don't, instead of animating every frame, I can animate every other frame and the mask still moves with the actual player's visor. All right, and just like that, we have our mask. So this is what we're working with, tracked all the way through. And we want to layer this part of our shot so that we have one part that is only the mask and then another part of the shot that is everything but the mask. So let's option and drag up to create a duplicate of this layer and then we'll uncheck the inverted button. And now we have one layer that's just the face mask and then one layer that's not the face mask and everything else. Obviously you can see that there's a little bit of a gap because of the feather between these two layers. So we're going to want to expand the mask a little bit here to cover that. And we can increase our feather to compensate. Maybe bring this to 15 and leave our mask expansion at 20. So now we have this, which is the face mask plus a little bit. And this, which is everything but the face mask. And this is where we're going to bring our second clip in. Let's bring all of this up so that we can place another clip beneath it. And now on this layer here, which is the visor, we're going to keyframe the opacity down. So right now the mask opacity is at 100%. Let's go forward four frames and then we'll put our mask opacity at 0%. So this is going to transition us from having the visor on to the visor not showing anymore. And this is where we can put the clip beneath it. So let's grab our next clip here. And we're just going to position it so you can see when the visor fades off, it reveals another visor, which we're going to go through next, which I think is a cool look if you can line those up. And now we're going to nest these two clips and we'll call it visor fade underscore one because this is part of our first shot. And now as this visor fades, we want to zoom in and go through this clip to the next one. So let's add a transform effect here to help us with our zoom. And after this fades for two frames, so when it's at 50% opacity, we're going to keyframe our position and our scale, uncheck use composition shutter angle, and set this to 360 so that we get a ton of motion blur. And then we're going to go forward one, two, three, four, five, six, and let's zoom all the way in here. Okay, maybe we go a little longer. Let's just go all the way to the end of this. And we're just going to bring the scale up until you can't see the visor anymore like that and let's select all of these right click and we're going to go ease out and ease in 
Now let's open the properties for these position keyframes and we're just going to pull these out so that our transition is a little bit less linear. And I would love to ease copy these and do the same thing for scale without having to do it manually, but sadly we can't do that. Not in Premiere Pro anyways. So let's pull these out and do something similar for our scale. Perfect. And now you can see that we have our shot, the visor fades and it zooms. And if we go frame by frame, you can see that the visor fades and then it starts to zoom with motion blur. And then we go into the next shot. And the only thing I want to do from here is add some RGB glitch effects to kind of sell the zoom effect. So we're going to grab our VR digital glitch effect. Let's drag that on. I want to get rid of all this weird distortion, but this is going to be really helpful for giving us a nice, easy RGB glitch effect that's native to Premiere without any plugins and just one drag and drop effect. So let's bring our geometry distortion all the way to zero and our distortion complexity all the way to zero. And then our color distortion can go up a little bit. Let's get it to where we want it to be in mid zoom. So right here and right in the middle of our keyframes here, we're going to have our color distortion be as strong as it can be. And then before the zoom has started, we're going to want this color distortion to be essentially zero. Let's just put it at like three. And then we're going to do the same thing at the end here. Just put that at three. And now when we zoom in, we get an RGB glitch. We get some motion blur, the visor fades off and we go into the next shot. And the process for this next clip is essentially the same. I'll show you quickly, just so you can kind of see how this loops and then how you repeat the loop to be as long as you want. But we're just gonna do one more here. So again, let's draw our mask starting at this marker that we've set grab the pen tool. I'm just going to draw one mask here and then I'll quickly do the rest without showing it all to you guys because you've already seen this. All right, so you can see here, I've placed a cut at the marker and then drawn this mask all the way through animating on every other frame so that it follows along. So again, we're going to drag up, holding option and dragging and uncheck that inverted button. And then we need to fill in this gap so let's increase our mask expansion to about there and we can feather that out a little bit. And then again, let's make sure that we animate that mask opacity to go from hundred down to zero over the course of four frames. And then we can nest these. And now we're essentially doing what we already did with our transitions. So let's actually just grab the transform and the VR digital glitch effects that we have here. Command C to copy, click on your clip, go right to the start of the nested sequence here and then command V to paste. And this gives you the zoom and the glitch. And we just have to adjust the position because you can see here, the visor takes up a larger part of the shot in this shot than in this frame here where the visor is much smaller in the frame. So we just need to scale in more to make it completely out of the shot as we zoom here. So let's scale and adjust our position and let's try to center this towards the middle of the visor like that. So if we play this back, we have to kind of go off a little bit to the side. So let me actually adjust the position and bring us back a little. There we go. And if we want, we can add a little cross dissolve at the end here just to make sure that any remaining bits of the visor slowly fade off. And if you want to do this with 10 players and create a crazy looping video that shows a full team or anything, you can do that. You can get really creative with it. You can also do this through things that aren't a visor, obviously, like any patch on a jersey, someone's eyeball, whatever you want. It's just a great way to do a transition that looks really complicated, but it's actually really easy and add a little spice to your videos. So if you like this tutorial, then please subscribe to the channel because I post a video editing and videography tutorials similar to this one on a regular basis. And I would love to have you around for that. If you like the way these shots are colored, I color them with my football video left pack, which you can get on my website. That'll be linked down in the description. And if you have any questions about anything, please comment. I love chatting with you guys and I'd be happy to help you out. Anyways, that's going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace.